Dub Nation. It's a two-game winning streak, but more importantly, the mojo's back. CJ Holmes is with me, San Francisco Chronicle Warriors beat reporter. He was at the scene in Sacramento last night. A lot of highs, some lows. CJ, you ready to do this, my man? Hey, let's do it. Beautiful. This is Locked On Warriors. You are Locked On Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Warriors your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get podcasts. Today's show is brought to you by Bet Online, our longtime sponsor. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. You can follow CJ Holmes on Twitter at CJ Holmes22. You can follow me on Twitter at Dog Surf Roadshow and this program on Twitter at Locked On Dubs. He is pointing at the address for the YouTube viewers. We also got the podcast audience. That's why I always try to remember to verbalize everything. CJ, you were at the scene in Sacramento yesterday. Some lows. We'll touch on that briefly. Um, but give us the recap of that game, dude. That was a positive, in my opinion, and all around. What are your thoughts? Well, I think you got to keep context. It was the Kings, and the Kings are bad enough when they're healthy. And yesterday they didn't have Sabonis <laughs> or De'Aaron Fox. So all things considered, yeah, it was it, it was it was positive, right? Um you know, it would have been – it would. I think it would have been more headline-worthy if they would have struggled in that game, but the Warriors did what they were supposed to do against mm-hmm. an inferior opponent. You know, this late in the season with seating on the line, they couldn't afford another road let down, like in Orlando, like in Washington. Um, you know, Steve Kerr said, you know, now that the, their playoff spot is locked up, um, hit that 50-win plateau in the season, now they're just focused on, you know, getting the highest seed – that they can. So, you know, games like this against a fear opponents. Um, yeah, I know Sacramento is basically a road game, but I mean, there are more Warriors fans in there than, than, than Kings fans last night. Um, so it was a win. The Warriors are supposed to have good all around team performances. Uh, Andrew Wiggins led the wave 25, uh, belly looked like a globe trotter out there last night. Yeah. Um, so it was good. It was good to see some of the supporting cast, uh, stepping up and not, and, and, you know, all the scoring wasn't just squarely on Jordan Poole's shoulders. So from that standpoint, yeah, it was, it was promising. No, you're totally right, man. And and the pool party is on fire, dude. That was the 17th straight game where he scored 20 or more points. Things are clicking for that young man. I, I think Warriors fans could not be happier. And the reason why I guess I was I'm expre- expressing a little more exuberance than perhaps I should for a game in Sacramento, uh, given you're right, it's the Kings, dude. It's not something to brag about, but... It wasn't that long ago the Warriors were on that abysmal one and four road trip that you were a part of. I think the highlight for your trip was seeing your family and that amazing dog. Um, mm-hmm. I love that picture you posted. But what do what is a? I, I guess I want to start with a player that has been getting a lot of criticism lately, and now all of a sudden it's almost like he just remembered he could play basketball, and that's the Mania Bielitsa. Uh, apologies as always if I mispronounce his name, but he put in 19 points, 12 rebounds. This was the Bielitsa that. Dub Nation remembered back in like November, December when he was playing like this consistency consistently. And then we just stopped seeing it. What what do you think is is the catalyst and the reason for him turning things around like he is? Um, well, you know, one thing is consistent minutes, right? You know, it's hard for anyone to get any type of offensive flow, you know, when they're only out there in spurts. Um, so, you know, as belly is kind of falling out of the rotation and, you know, over, over, over the months, you know, it makes it kind of hard to have performances like that. Um, I think that's probably the biggest thing, you know, he got a lot mm-hmm. of opportunity last night, played a lot of minutes. And when you do that, it comes with a certain level of confidence and he performed. I mean, as we saw earlier in the year, he's capable of it. He's a good player. Um, they were trying to label last night as the belly revenge game. I was like, all right, like, <laughs> calm down, calm down. But, um, <laughs> definitely. Definitely a positive, you know, step in the right direction for Belly. You know, um, Steve Kerr, um, a couple of games ago, I think he, I can't remember if he was talking pregame or postgame, but um, he was talking about Belly, and he's like, you know, he's he's a special player for us because mm-hmm. you know he can do things that no other big on our roster can do. Right, Belly can stretch the floor, he can put it on the floor, he can you know distribute a little bit, 
And, you know, a guy with that kind of versatile skill set is going to be, you know, very valuable come playoff time should Kerr decide to, you know, keep him in the rotation. That's something that's, you know, I, I think the kinks and all that's still being worked out. But um, definitely a big game for Belly. Very positive for him. And, you know, we'll see if, you know, this is a sign of him turning a corner of sorts. And if so, I mean, the Warriors just get a little more scarier. It is crazy, man. And, and you're right. And I guess another reason why the game last night uh, carried some extra weight for me was, A, it was the second of a back-to-back. And and so Clay Thompson's out. Otto Porter Jr. is out. Andre Iguodala's out. Um, so you had more minutes for players like Jonathan Kaminga. Put in 31 minutes. I've been advocating for him on this show for a long time to get more minutes. He put in 17 points, five rebounds, a solid performance. Um, it was just an all-around uh, a great play. Dude, Jordan Poole, though, is on on pace to get a rookie max deal, man. And it wouldn't surprise me if that's what he asks for. What have you been seeing that's changed? Like, like is it just experience? Like, like what what is like where that extra gear come in? Um, and what do you foresee with Jordan Poole moving forward? He is him. You know, Jordan is that dude right now. I mean, um, you know, it's crazy because I think that's what everyone's been trying to get to the bottom of. You know, what's different, Jordan? You know, what's what's changed for you? Like, why is all this, you know, why all this now? And I think it's just a mixture of, like you said, experience and opportunity, right? Um, you know, just to, on the same note as Belly, you know, guys can't really spread their wings unless they have the opportunity to do so, unless they have, you know, time to be able to work through their mistakes and, you know, you know, discover the little nuances of their game, you know, how to, how to shake free, how to get open, you know, certain angles on the drives. And, you know, with, you know, so many veterans being out this year, you know, I think pool's finally gotten a chance to, you know, show what he can do. I mean, you know, the talent's always been there. Um, it's just for him, it's just been a matter of putting it all together. And, you know, if extended minutes, you know, he's been able to do that. And as you can see, he's getting more and more confident. I mean, he's sitting mm-hmm. here, leaving guys in the dust off the dribble now. It's, it's, it's getting ridiculous at this point. Um, Dude, it is. He had people on skates last night. There was that one play near the end where it, he's doing crossovers without actually crossing over. Like, that. it's a, it's a really tricky, wild movie pools where he literally with one – he's not using his other hand for a crossover. Yeah, it's I don't like know a little in and out. A little in and out. <laughs> yeah. Yes, dude. Mm-hmm. And he's mastered that, and he's just literally having people spinning around in circles over it. It's incredible. I'm dude, I'm super impressed. It, it's this is the part that's going to be hard for the Warriors, man. In, in a week and a half, we got three games remaining. Congratulations on this next three days. Actually, just being able to breathe, dude. This is a nice uh little respite for the Warriors and, and for people like yourself, who's uh, I commend traveling with this team, man. You're getting inside information most other people will not on these road trips, especially. But what are they going to do when the postseason starts and you've got six players that fit five starting positions? I, I personally love because because all indications are Steph's going to play when the playoffs start. That's what we're hoping for, and it's likely going to happen. Steph, Clay, Poole, Wiggins, Draymond, and Looney. Six people for five starting positions. I'm at a point personally where I don't want Poole to come off the bench anymore. I don't. I I think he's that good. Um, but I also think that Kerr is a loyalist to to Clay Thompson, and I don't think Kerr's forgetting his teammate Michael Jordan in 1995 when Jordan missed a year and a half came back and even he wasn't the same and he wasn't coming back from an injury. He just was coming back from a break and he wasn't the same player until next year. And I think that's where Kerr's mentality is with Clay in a lot of regard in your opinion, because you can't really, there's nothing objective about this, but in your opinion, like what do you think the Warriors are going to do and what should they do? I don't know, but whatever they do, do it's going to be, Ooh, it's going to be spicy. Um, I agree. I don't think Kerr's just going to, you know, bench Clay. Obviously Steph's going to play. Um, you know, obviously Draymond's gonna play. So mm-hmm. I mean, I think that leaves, you know, Wiggins when it comes to the starting lineup, maybe that, that leaves Wiggins or Alooney as the odd man out. You know, you can go small, put Draymond at the five, you know, Wiggins at the four, Jordan at the three, Clay. I mean, Clay at the three, Jordan at the two, um, you know, Steph at the one, or you know, maybe you send Andrew Wiggins to the bench, you know, maybe he's better suited. You know, in the playoff run, you know, bringing offense off the bench, take a little bit of pressure off of him and leave Jordan Poole in the starting lineup. But, you know, the biggest question is going to be, will Jordan be able to sustain this level of production when he has to share shots with Steph and Clay? You know, 
Um, there's only one basketball, man. Um, and all three of those guys need the ball in their hands, you know. Um, you know, I, I, as much as Jordan has been proficient with catching and shooting in recent weeks, you know, he's also finding his rhythm by attacking the cup, getting into the lane. Um, you know, he's starting to evolve as a passer, a distributor. Yes. So it's going to be it, – it's a tough decision. It's such a tough decision for Coach Kerr. I mean, because, like, what, what are you going to do? Do you want to – you know, I don't think he's going to bench Clay, but if he's even considering that, what are you going to do, alienate? You know, a guy like Thompson who's still trying to, like, you know, work his way back. Yeah. Uh, that's been there before. Are you going to, you know, alienate a, an Andrew Wiggins who's been struggling with confidence? I think if they want to go small, maybe it makes the most sense to, you know, bring Lo a guy like Looney off the bench with the second unit because, you know, I, I think, you know, I can't, I, I want to say I know the, I know the guy too well, but he comes across as someone who's be more accepting of a change like that. Yeah, um, but then again, and, and, that would make the Warriors even smaller than they already are in that starting five. So there's a lot of different ways Golden State could go with this. Um, either either way they do, either direction they do go in is going to come up with a little bit of drama. Yeah, and and look, man, I look, uh, Steve Kerr is very prescient, and there's a lot of moves he makes um, that really I think fly under the radar. But if you're if you're a keen observer, you can kind of pick up on things. One of those was Kerr benching Looney during that that road trip. Um, he he claimed it was just to try things out, but I I really think subtly it was a move to see if Looney would be okay with coming off the bench for that very reason. And and uh, and for, they're going to play the Jazz in all likelihood, and even if they play the Nuggets in the first round, I think they can get away with that starting five or where Draymond Green is your center. Small against them for sure, yeah. Exactly. So, um, and, and look, man, as long as they're eating their built bars, it's all good. CJ, have you ever had a built bar? I have not. Tell me more. <laughs> Dude, you, you're natural. <laughs> they, these are the yummy protein <laughs> bars, and you're a former athlete. You played it at Auburn. I love that, dude. Bravo. Um, so I'm sure you care about what you put in your body. I care about it. And built bars are protein bars that are covered in 100% real chocolate. Yet they taste amazing. My personal favorite flavor is cookies and cream. I'm going to read some flavors to you, uh, uh, CJ, and let me know what you think would be your favorite. So they got like mint brownie, coconut, coconut almond, white chocolate cookies and cream, and then cookies and cream itself. Any of those stick out to you? Oh, those last two. I need those last two. Yes. All right, man. I'll hook you up. I will, we'll, we'll figure that out at some point. But here's the beauty of Built Bars, man. If you go to Built.com, you can see the bottom line in terms of calories and sugar and, and, and all the nutritional content. So they're only 130 calories each, whereas most candy bars are 240. They only got four grams of sugar, whereas most candy bars have 30 grams of sugar, yet they pack 17 grams of protein. What I love about these things the most, I eat one and I feel full. As opposed to like constantly being hungry and wanting to gorge on more stuff. So they're amazing. They've been sponsoring this program for a long time. I'm going to hook CJ up and they're all about taste. Just go to built.com, use the promo code LOCK15 and get 15% off your order. Again, the promo code is LOCK15 for 15% off at built.com. You are locked on Warriors. Your daily Golden State Warriors podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Warriors your first listen. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Now podcast, nightly recaps of every NBA game with analysis from our local experts. It's free and available wherever you get podcasts. You can follow CJ Holmes on Twitter at CJ Holmes 22 Fantastic content you're producing there, sir. You are the... Cisco Chronicle, Warriors beat reporter covering this team and doing a marvelous job at that. Dude, what, what are you what are you thinking about the first round opponent? It's almost certainly going to be either the Utah Jazz or the Denver Nuggets. I think it's safe to say we all prefer the team traveling to uh, yeah. the Rocky Mountains of Utah and not Denver for their first round. They're going to have a high altitude series regardless, most likely. Um, who are you favoring and what do you see as the matchups for each of these teams? Uh, you know... If you ask the Warriors, they'll tell you they don't care who their first round matchup is. Right. But if you ask an objective journalist such as myself, I'll tell you that, you know, I think they'd be better off in a series against Utah, a team that's been slumping a little bit. They've had some bouts of inconsistency. Um, 
you know, the Rudy Gobert factor is kind of, you know, it's kind of concerning. And a guy like Donovan Mitchell can go get 40 on any given night. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just think the Warriors match up better with them um, on the perimeter. And, that you know, you take Rudy Gobert out of the game and I think they can kind of go, you know, man for man with uh, those guys in the backcourt. But, you know, talking about a series of Denver, I mean, they've struggled against Denver all year long. And, yeah. You know, Nikola Jokic, you know, can eat them up inside and Aaron Gordon and, you know, just from us, you know, especially if we're talking about, you know, potentially going small. I just, you know, I don't think a series like that would, you know, I mean, I'm not saying they'd lose the series, but it'd be a very, it'd be, I feel like it'd be a more difficult series, you know, compared to a Utah. Um, yeah. Agreed. So, yeah, if I, had to choose, if I had to choose host, host Utah for sure. <laughs> and and do you think they can um I feel like you and I have kind of come to a conclusion here that the likely starting lineup is going to be the three guard lineup with Wiggins at the four Draymond at the five but I, we're just simply speculating here but it, it seems to be a common sense decision um can that lineup work against Denver like can Draymond start at the five and handle Jokic enough to at least not let him just completely take over early on what are your thoughts on that you know Jokic is a Jokic is a handful man um is Draymond still kind of finding his way back? There's no telling how he'll be able to, you know, maybe he'll be able to do it for one or two games, right? But will Draymond be able to hold up physically in a, you know, a seven-game series, you know, especially if that thing goes seven? Like, I don't know. I feel like over time, just like the the, the pressure of Jokic will just kind of, you know, chip away and chip away. Um, that's what he does throughout games anyway. I mean, you know, a lot of games Jokic just – quiet early but you know as it as the game goes on and the defense starts to wear down next thing you know he's laying that thing in front of the rim uh-huh. seemingly every trip down so you know that would be the challenge in a series like that um I think a guy like Rudy Gobert is more one-dimensional right and it's easier to kind of like take him out of the game of physicality you know you can put bodies on him but Jokic can stuck he can he can step out he can go around he can dribble around you and you know when he's not scoring, guys are cutting around him. He's finding open three-point shooters. I mean, that's just a lot to deal with, man. Um, I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's definitely a tall task, especially for a dude um, who's still trying to work his way back in the all-star form. Dude, it's, it is it is a relief seeing him getting closer to that form. I mean, there was, there was like – I was my, I was putting pressure on that panic button about a week ago because Draymond, even him – it was – it was kudos to him for for realizing it and having the self awareness to understand that he was the problem on the court for a lot of those games, but seeing him starting to play better is huge. I missed the part last night where he got kicked out. Like, what happened there, man? And because I mean, he's even concerned with these fourteen technicals that he's got on the season. Um, like, like, can you explain what happened there? I totally missed that. You know, I would my I think my head was down. I think I was writing something when it happens to happen so fast. But yeah, um, apparently there was a, there was a call that Draymond didn't like and. Uh, <laughs> In the news, in, in his news conference last night, he said that all he said to the ref was like, "Man, that's that was that was completely wrong," or like mm-hmm. something like that. And they tacked him up, but you know, who knows what was actually said? You know, knowing Draymond, but uh, <laughs> you know, but you know, it did seem like those refs in Sacramento last night had a real short fuse. They, they did, man. That, I mean, I saw absolutely. Jordan. I mean, Jordan Poole got slapped with a tech, and you know, he he's never. You know what I'm saying? He's not really that much of a talker out there. You know, he's more of a doer. I was like, man, if it's out here checking, you know, giving Jordan Poole a tech, then Draymond don't have a chance. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. Dude, are you, um, you're, as a member of the San Francisco Chronicle, if I if I remember correctly, I think you folks and the Mercury News alternate in terms of having an MVP vote. Is that correct? And just the vote for the end of season awards in general. Do you get a vote this year? Uh, that I'm not sure of. Okay. I envy you if you do, man. I would. That, that's my, my dream thing to happen to me as a media member if i can ever get to vote man for first the second third team on nba mvp who is your mvp right now if you do get to vote like who would you who would, who's your call we saw Jokic on uh on sunday basically eliminate the lakers from the regular season peace out la man that's a disaster and i got an interesting trade proposal when we come back from our next break to you but who's your mvp and and if, and if if you don't mind if it's an easy answer who's your first team on the nba ah uh, um I had to pick an MVP. I don't know. I think Giannis is coming on so strong right now. Um, you know, if you asked me a week ago, I would have said Jokic. But right now, I think Giannis is kind of uh, getting up in that range for me. Same. First team All-NBA this season, I'm going to go Ja, 
Dem- I'm gonna go Ja Demar, Jokic, Giannis, LeBron. Wow, that's eye opening, man. So you're gonna pick LeBron even with the Lakers being as bad as they are, huh? Dude is leading the league in scoring. I mean, bucket is a bucket, you know. <laughs> so I'll, I'll counter you with this. Uh, a year or two ago, I think uh, Bradley Beal had an unbelievable scoring season, um, but his team was awful as well. So are you are you are you adding reputation to the mix? Here? I've been waiting for this day my entire life. As a Wizards, uh, you know, as a someone who grew up a Wizards fan, there are players who are clearly dominant, and then you know. You know what? I'm, I'm going to hold back on that one. I'm going to hold back on that one. Um, no, bring, bring it, man. What, no, let's we're, let's no, just say on. that, you know, there, there's stat sheets. You know, there, there's full-up stat sheets. It, it, I don't know. It might be a contrary. LeBron is LeBron James, right? But I just feel like a lot of things Bradley Beal did, yeah, he's putting up a lot of points, but things he was doing on the other side of the ball wasn't conducive to winning. You know what I'm saying? Correct. So it's like it's one thing to be a big-time scorer, but it's just like, you know, Every like, although the Lakers are struggling as a unit, every single thing LeBron does hasn't helps them win the game. You know, it's not. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to say he's faultless. You know, in their struggles this year, but I mean, he's doing this in spite of them. Like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? You, you yeah, feel that's me? true. Like, if LeBron doesn't do this, it'd be a lot worse. I guess. But let me ask you this: Then you're putting uh, LeBron over Durant. I'm gonna put LeBron over Durant, man. Wow. Okay. I'm with LeBron right. Durant this season. These are bold takes. I like it. Mm-hmm. Uh, what about why why John Morant over Stephen Curry? I don't know. I'm, I, it's just recency bias. You know, Jaws had such a good season, and you know the the Grizzlies are, are surging. And I don't know. Just personally, I, I I would like to see a guy in a small market like that. You know, be worthy of it, uh, that. You know, that kind of an honor. You know, Steph's been there before. Um, you know, he's missing some time here. You know, down the stretch to no fault of his own. I mean, so is Ja, right? But you know, his mm-hmm. team. You know, right now, I just believe you know they they kind of have the better team right now, and um, you know, I think the results just spoken for themselves. And you know, if uh, I I think Ja's going to be you know just outside of the MVP race, but you know, first team All NBA, I think I think I think that's I think he's deserving of that this year. Yeah, and the Demar Derozan uh, call is interesting. He has had a phenomenal year, dude, and mm-hmm. it's the Lakers could have had him. That is insane. It went with Westbrook over him. Is he just in hindsight, right? You know, <laughs> I don't think so. I think it was a very obvious call. I don't. I never understood the Westbrook. Westbrook. I even am just saying that naturally now. That's ridiculous. But no, the Westbrook uh, uh, trade. I I thought they gave up way too much for him. I his shooting has never been exemplary. His defense has been overrated. I did not get that trade. I when I heard that Demar Derozan would have been a, a legitimate a legitimate option for the Lakers. And they picked Russ. I just, dude, that, that blew my mind. That's all I can say about that. Um, and if I had a vote, CJ, and this is why I love sports, dude. People could just debate and be all like, and just it's just fun. Um, I think I think uh, Jokic and Bede and Giannis have to be on that team, right? I, I don't know if you included all three of those as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the other two are really up for debate. Like I, and this is where maybe I'll be a homer and saying Stephen Curry should be on there, but the numbers are solid. He didn't have a bad year. And you're seeing his impact on the Warriors when he's not on the court, right? I mean, they are not the same team, whereas the Memphis Grizzlies without Jaw are still like a staggeringly winning team. They're still like pulling it off without him. Um, that's the only reason why I would put Steph over Jaw. And then that other guard position to me is just up for grabs. I don't know if it could be DeMar DeRozan, could be Luka Doncic, who's having a quietly amazing season. Um, but again, this stuff is just so fun to debate. And I got a trade proposal for you when we come back because this has been something that I did not expect would blow Twitter up. And I'd love to get your your insights on this. First, I got to give some love to yet another longtime sponsor of this program, Bet Online. CJ, have you ever been a gambling man? I believe you have to have money to be willing to lose money. Therefore, <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> That's a good answer. That's a great answer. Well, if you ever do have money, Bet Online is the place to go if you want to have some fun. And BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your betting needs and sports information. Find all of the latest sports developments, including this week's Masters Championship odds, podcasts, and reviews for all the different leagues this season. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. The Warriors don't play the Lakers till Thursday, so those lines are not out yet. I'll uh, reveal that later in the week, but head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet online, it's where the game starts. You are locked on, Warriors. 
Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Warriors your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get podcasts. One final segment with the greatness that is CJ Holmes. He's covering the Golden State Warriors for the San Francisco Chronicle. <laughs> Thank you for the modesty. I respect that. You can right. CJ Holmes 22. Um, here's a print trade proposal. I just love messing around. And I threw this out there just because the ESPN trade machine accepted it. And uh, I did this yesterday primarily because um, I, it, the, the Lakers season was over. And I, I thought about this trade during the offseason, actually, and last offseason, because me personally, and you can look at the receipts from my Twitter account, I was saying since last August, this Lakers team is done. They have no chance. Um, and I thought they should blow that team up a year ago. I, 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 you know, for whatever reason, man, I'm not trying to brag here, but I saw this collapse coming. And Laker Nation not, and the Lakers organization clearly did not. But now I threw this tr- trade out there again today. Would, would Dub Nation support the Golden State Warriors trading Andrew Wiggins, a player who, yes, he's an all-star starter this year, but is likely not going to be with this team long-term. Either they're probably going to uh, sign and trade him after this season or next. It wouldn't be a sign and trade after this season, I'm sorry. But if it's after next season, it would be a sign and trade simply because the team, I don't think, wants to give him another max deal. James Wiseman, who didn't play at all this year, he's making $12 million a season. These, these dollar figures count with this current uh, Warriors ownership group, and three future first-round picks for Anthony Davis. And this thing's really picked up, man. It's a lot more even than I thought it would be. Um, there's still two hours left to vote. We're recording this at 1.08 p.m. on Monday, April 4th. CJ, what are your thoughts on this proposed trade? I mean, I get moving Wiggins, but trading a young hobbled center for an older hobbled center – uh, I don't, I don't know about that one. I mean, it seems like Anthony Davis can't stay on the court either. I think I'd just continue to roll my dice with Wiseman. He's young, and I still, you know, I still believe in his future. I still believe in his talent, and I, I, I think he probably could have played this season. But I honestly think that the Warriors shut him down, not necessarily because he had any setbacks. Like this is my little conspiracy hmm. theory I've been working with. I don't think they necessarily shut him down because any setbacks but like why would they bring him back into this high pressure chaotic situation you know what i'm saying mm, I, just, first of all but, cj i, I sorry to interrupt i love conspiracy theory <laughs> so con- in sports so continue on please you know I, I, I think in their mind they're like look we're not going to bring james back into this high pressure you know bad situation we're on, we're, we're, on, we're on losing streaks like we're playing with lineups and stuff like let's not expose him to that is that's just gonna hurt his development even further so let's just Let's just put him on the shelf, you know, bring him back next season at full health and go from there. Um, I still believe in James Wiseman's future. I mean, if you can go get AD for Wiggins and some other combination of players or picks, you know, why not? This team needs help at center. Um, but I don't know. I, I, I still believe in Wiseman's talent and his future, and I'd like to see how that plays out. And Dude, that is – um- I have talked to a lot of former players, and these include Hall of Fame type players, about James Wiseman. It is there is I have not heard a single dissenting opinion to the notion that James Wiseman is has the talent to be a star and possible superstar in this game. His speed, his agility, his ability to cover the floor in, in such a short amount of time, um, his his shooting, he actually has touch on his shot. I am totally with you that if Wiseman is healthy, the sky's the limit for his talent. Um, and and again, I've never I've never heard anyone who actually knows the game say, "No, nah, I don't know if he's going to be any good." It's just a matter of whether or not he can stay on the court. So that is, I love your conspiracy theory. That is welcome on this show anytime, dude. I love that, and I think there's some validity to that because why throw him into the fire when when you're trying to build his confidence and you're looking long term? So. I hear you, man. Um, and CJ, I, I, I wanted to save this topic for the end just so, so it's not a, a downer, but we can't avoid it. Sacramento had yet another uh, 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 mass shooting. I believe six people um, were pronounced dead at the scene of this this incident. Uh, and this was like literally the night before the Warriors game. Um, you were there. You mentioned it was somber. Steve Kerr dedicated his press conference to it. Please tell us what the scene was like. Your personal thoughts. Shoot away, sir. It was just somber. It was just uh, real somber, man. Um, you know, it felt kind of tone deaf, you know, even playing basketball, you know, on a day like that after such a tragedy in that city. Mm-hmm. You know, um, 
I don't know. I feel like I'm, I'm I'm a real. I think the word's like empathic person. Like I feel things and just like the vibe. Yeah. Just so so sad around the city. Every single TV it was flipped to the news station with you know nonstop coverage of the of the event and it was, it was just sad, man. It was just sad. Um, I commend Coach Kerr for you know speaking out against you know the senseless violence and gun regulation in this country. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and he made a good point. You know. You know, he was just, you know, at the, at the end of what he said, he was like, I don't think it's appropriate to talk about basketball, basketball yeah. right now. You guys can catch me after the game. And I think he was absolutely right. Um, I know, um, you know, Kings players and coaches had, you know, <laughs> had spoke their mind on the subject as well. Um, so, yeah, you know, it was a good Warriors win yesterday. But, you know, let's keep things in perspective. You know, sports are sports are fun. We love them. But um, sometimes in life, there you know, there's things bigger than basketball that you know need to be addressed and focused on. And you know, I'm glad the Warriors, you know, and the Kings took some time to do that, you know, before getting back to business. No, you're, you're that's you you express that very eloquently, and I have strong respect for the fact that you have empathy for just humanity as a whole. I personally do feel we're all interconnected. I mean, the science literally states that if we had the proper vision, you'd see that all of us on this planet. Molecular on a molecular level are literally connected, and we can sometimes feel that. Um, I don't know what the the weapon used in this case was, um, but I've always been a proponent that AR-15s have no place in a civilized society. I don't know if that was a weapon that was used in this case. Um, do you know? Has that been revealed? Um, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Um, okay. if it was even revealed. Uh, I'm not even sure if they've even got any suspects yet. Um, it's a sad, sad thing to happen in Sacramento, yeah. and how, you know, I would say hopefully this is the last time, you know, something like this happens. But you know, the way things have been trending over the years, you know, it's an, you know, it's, it's impossible to say that for certain. So I just hope that you know at some point we can all you know come together as a society and you know put it into this senseless violence because it's, 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 it's devastating, man. Agreed, hundred percent agree. And you mentioned being a Wizards fan. I mean, Washington D.C. has been uh culpable to this for decades um i mean the washington bullets owner changed the team name to the wizards for that very reason i believe i can't remember if it was him or someone he knew who was shot steve kerr has a very uh a, a personal feeling about this simply because his father was murdered by a gun um while he was a professor uh overseas and um and I, from what i'm seeing here the a suspect was taken into custody uh, and booked on charges of assault with a firearm and being a prohibited person in possession of a firearm. So they weren't even legally carrying one. And the suspect was 26 years of age. So I'm sorry to be such a downer, man. This is a depressing topic, but it had to be addressed. And, and I really think you, you expressed yourself incredibly eloquently, like I said a moment ago. And, um, and I said my piece, but uh, let's, let's just hope for a more peaceful world. On a lighter note, uh, basketball is trivial in a lot of ways. It's a game. But, I mean, the beauty of it is it uplifts moods, man. It, I mean, sometimes communities literally rise simply because of sports. I mean, 9-11 was a great example of this when the Yankees first came back to play. Uh, I think even during the pandemic, seeing sports kept a lot of us sane. Um, and even like yesterday in Sacramento, despite the shooting, they still played. And I'm sure that's a nice little escape. Uh, for everyone involved. Uh, what do you got going on uh, uh, with the Chronicle, CJ? I think last time you came on, you mentioned you might have a piece on Jordan Poole. Uh, any updates on that and anything else you'd like to promote before we call it a day? I expect it this week. I'll leave it at that. Yes! <laughs> oh, look at you. You got access to the pool party, man. <laughs> that is good journalism, dude. He does not talk to the press that often. Do you think, is it fair to say the reason why he's short with the press is because of all the criticism he received uh, as a first-round pick? Because, uh, look, I, I, I'm, I will... Come out right up front and say, I did not expect Jordan Poole to be a great player. Did not expect it. I was wrong. Um, and maybe Poole was offended at, at all the criticism. Is that what you think it is? Like, what are your thoughts on that? Um, Some of that, yeah. But, you know, I'll say I'll save the rest of the deep, the, the juicy stuff from my stories. Make sure you guys uh, read and subscribe. I love it. And you can follow CJ Holmes on Twitter at CJ Holmes 22 where I'm sure you're going to blast that out. He loves the retweets, folks. I'm with him. Uh, the likes are eh. Give us the retweet, love, man. Come we on, just hit that retweet, retweet button. <laughs> we need, we need the retweets. 
<laughs> keep up the great work cj thank you for coming on i hope to have you on again soon um and tomorrow your partner at the san francisco chronicle uh connor Laterno is going to join me uh we'll talk some warriors uh with him as well and cj you're always welcome on this program man thank you so much brother and hope you have a, a great day and a great three days off dude like that's when have you had you don't get that very often at home right I don't necessarily say it's an off day i have three days off but uh light a lighter yeah. three days but yeah thanks yes. for having me man uh connor for watching this i love you and uh likewise dude <laughs> likewise man and uh yeah man thanks for having me on studio again soon uh, absolutely hope we hang out someday dude you seem like someone i feel like we could have a good time together man so we will and dub nation hope you have a great day thank you everyone